Good evening. We're calling the select board meeting of Monday, May 14th to order at 6.03 p.m. Um, we'll start our agenda with uh, opening remarks, announcements, and any review of the agenda. Is there anything that needs to be announced or mentioned about tonight's agenda? Not hearing any of that. We'll get right into our action and discussion items. First up is our complete streets policy, which we received a copy of the most recent uh, flavor. And so I think we have Mr. Mooring and, and uh, Mr. Hayden here to to take us through that a little bit. Would you like to share with us some information about it? The committee voted to have uh, Gilbert make the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> so the last time we talked to the select board, you had three, three issues. Um, the first issue, and actually I see you have the highlighted one, so that's good. Page two, the uh, desire was, was to make sure that resurfacing and minor maintenance work didn't have to come to the select board every time. So that was, um, we separated out, <clears throat> we separated that out so that any type of work such as routine maintenance that does not change the really geometry or operations can automatically have a waiver from the complete street policy. And that the other four items that need a waiver are listed below that. <clears throat> so that, that allows us if we want to resurface a road and you don't have to talk about how we're out doing complete streets on it. <clears throat> the second one was the issue we had the tree inventory and the tree map on two places on the references and we just combine those together as one reference that's on page four on the top of page four and then the final one was <clears throat> how to handle and implement this plan which is on the last page page six and we took a stab at that in which we um, said that the oversight responsibility is a select board through the town manager to oversee implementation and execution of this policy in consultation with the Transportation Advisory Committee and other appropriate town departments and committees. And then we have an effective date and so forth listed on there as well. Um, I understand you haven't really decided how you want the end of your policies to be yet, but we just mm -hmm. took a stab at how to lay it out there. Um, so that's kind of what we did. We hope that meets what you were interested in. If we need to go back, we can. If not, it would be great to move this on to Mass Highway. Okay. Does the board have any questions or comments on this? this group? Well, I, I just kind of the obvious one. Um, clearly, um, if it goes into effect in May, it's select board, but that's only going to be for X months, and then the whole document would have to get updated to town <coughs> council. Correct. Yeah, and, and, and along those lines, I think that the, um, if we use language such as the town council or select board prior to the seating of the council, uh, then you don't have to take it directly back to the council right away. It can come back to the council at some future date. And uh, I think that partly it's question of how much the council is going to be able to handle right at the beginning and uh, almost as a favor to, to them to not put the pressure on it. So that was my only thought. Mm -hmm. But I really appreciate the changes, and so thank you. Absolutely. Ms. Brewer? I have a question and a comment. The question, and I actually wrote here so maybe Ms. Kruger to tell me if she's satisfied with it, um, under six jurisdiction, I had made a note that she had wondered when it said the town shall advocate, she wrote, who is it that does that shall? Do you feel like you have enough of an answer to that since that didn't act, that, that wording didn't change? Um, do you want me to answer? Yes, I So, if you're here, because we don't have my mark. Um, it would seem at this point that it's who's, who's ever acting on behalf of the town, whether that the manager, or the council, or the support. It, it's a little. Uh, but it's sort of within the boundaries of the town, but outside its jurisdiction, um, such as on a private development. I suppose it could be the planning board. I mean, it depends who's the principal in that case. It's a little squishy. I'm not sure it harms anything, but I, 
can't really say planning board, you have to go advocate for this because it's just because it's in the policy. Ms. Wool. I mean, I imagine that could include other things too. It could be a diversity which is inside the boundaries but outside the jurisdiction mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. state actions and yeah. so forth. I guess, yeah, it's a, good, yeah. it's a good question. It might apply to the second paragraph of six as well, though it's a little more clear. But I mean, I think what that implies to me is that it would depend on which body is initiating or, you know, if DPW is doing things, obviously you've got to coordinate with uh, these state bodies anywhere at the university, and so I assume that's it. But it's a good, it's a good question to raise. It was left kind of open, like you say, mm -hmm. because you have the planning board, ZBA, and site plan review, which could have, mm -hmm. actually be working on <coughs> projects which aren't on town ways. And then it could be the DPW working with somebody, or it could be the select board working with a developer who's coming in and doing a special project. So there's a multitude mm -hmm. of groups that could possibly be doing this. Yes. Now that I'm kind of plugging, I, I wonder, you know, I, I hate to make you come back again. Maybe we can adopt it as an amendment. It's just advocate that the project comply as if, like, the planning board would make them comply. And I, I don't know that this has um, authority to do that when it's not a town project or a town way. But yeah, but very specifically, the authority is laid out here and does not include other jurisdictions. I can't remember the exact words. So, I mean, that that lack of authority or non-authority, I think, is clear, and the advocacy then would have to be or suggested to be within that framework. Um, so, yeah, squishy is 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 the word. Um, and, and, you know, as much as, as I think we would all have, but certainly the committee would like to say, well, oh, you've got to do this because that's not, a, that doesn't seem to be appropriate in those cases. So how to take the squishiness out of something that we almost have jurisdiction over, I don't know. We didn't figure out. Mm -hmm. Just, just Walt. I mean, I, I, we're all getting to parsing words here. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that Ms. Kruger is focusing on the word comply, mm -hmm. and I'm focusing on the word advocate. Well, they go together. In this you case. know, so yeah. So if you can't, you can't require, but you can advocate, advocate. for. Mm -hmm. Maybe, the, maybe you could make the, have the words state be compatible with. I seem to recall Mr. Moore used the example of university projects when he was here before. So I don't. I could be wrong about that. You know, say how a university uh, road interfaces with Amherst roads and our complete streets notions, things like that. But I, mean, I guess I'm assuming advocacy is the key word. I don't know if it's worth worrying about. Mr. Walker? So I think this is a town of Amherst policy, so it doesn't, it, it, I think this applies to all boards and committees and officials of the town. So I don't think you have to say, if you say one board, then everybody else is sort of off the hook. I think mm -hmm. what you're setting is a town-wide policy mm -hmm. on how we approach things. You're stating, you're enunciating what those goals are. I mean, I think that there's, um, I mean, all these policies are going to have to get reviewed at some point after the council takes takes office, but, um, so, and because it, there's a lot of committees that are, that are cited in here that may or may not exist, I think it's, it's not, it doesn't harm it to say just that leave it as a select board. Mm -hmm. Ms. So I haven't made my comment yet, but I'm still going to ask another question. Um, speaking of the committees that are listed in here, I had it noted last time that the future version was going to include calling out Shade Tree, DAAC, DRB, Planning Board, and ZBA. And where is that done? Because I just missed it. We, we <coughs> that committee kind of left those all out. So I'm not sure why Mr. Bachman just said that then, so I'm confused. Be, well, my, my point is, is that it doesn't have they to. They don't need to. Right. Doesn't right. need to. It says any committee because it's mm -hmm. a townwide policy. So it doesn't. If you say the TAC is responsible for it, then everybody else is. Oh, I'll I, I'm not convinced it is a townwide policy, and that's where that's where my concern remains. Saying something's a select board policy. If we had more of a policy book, maybe I'd feel a little bit better about saying. If it's a select board policy, it's a town policy. But um, I'm just a little 
I guess it comes back to the squishy part again. I'm okay with not listing out committees, although I would have used them as examples. But mm -hmm. again, obviously they could change in the future, mm -hmm. as opposed to the set list of only these. And if you're not on that list, you don't have to worry about it. But again, it comes back to my variation on what I wrote with Ms. Kruger's concern, which was the town shall advocate or anywhere in here that's referring to the town. I would just like something to be clear in here that while this is the select board policy, it means all bodies are responsible for it, not just the select board, meaning also when it eventually gets revised, which I don't, that was my comment, I don't think it should be revised at all to reference town council at this point because we have enough other policies that'll need to be changed that way. And it won't not apply because, mm -hmm. um, because there will be a council yeah. and that's just how it will be. But um, is there a way to make it, I mean, I understand that you, you are saying that. I get those words, but I'm trying to understand a word, a phrase that we can put in here that makes it clear that when something is a complete streets policy, it's not just the select board thought this was a good idea and the TAC thought it was a good idea. It's that everybody's got to think it's a good idea now. Well, I think that I would suggest that under the oversight responsibility that's in the highlight on the last page that talks about the select board through town managers to oversee implementation and execution of this policy in consultation with the Transportation Advisory and other appropriate town departments and committees. Um, that may capture other committees, but it may be that we want to tweak that just a smidge to put a little more responsibility on other committees at that point, as far as the oversight, which would then make everything previous to that inclusive of them as well, as far as the responsibility for, for bringing that forward. I think the select board is responsible for public ways. This mm -hmm. is, you're ultimately responsible. So this is regulating, you're saying this applies to everybody in town. And when we submit this to the state, they're gonna accept it if you vote it if the, if the TAC voted it, they would say, fine, but what's the chief elected official saying? And they want you to vote <coughs> on this one, and that's why it's a select board policy. And it would apply to any public way, because that's under your purview. Yeah. So I'm really not trying to be argumentative. Mm -hmm. That's for another topic. But <laughs> this issue that I'm trying to get at is, <laughs> is... The night is young. Yes. <laughs> As I understand, again, all those words and the fact that we need to get this through the state, I get that that's really yep. important at this point. What I'm trying to understand is when somebody who joins the ZBA later feel, knows that there is a responsibility of the ZBA to know about the complete streets policy. It's not just the select board policy that's in a folder somewhere that ZBA doesn't know anything about and the person who's supporting ZBA right now doesn't necessarily know that either. How, how do we ensure, practically speaking, it happens. Maybe we don't have to put the words in here, but when I don't feel that we have a consistent way of communicating to all boards that something exists, um, you know, how can we feel confident in that? And then later, we don't want to complain because they didn't do it early on in their process when they kind of forgot it existed. I mean, this may be a little redundant of what Mr. Bogman said, but I think, and I'm going to give it. A, I'm going to attempt to answer your question, Ms. Brewer. Um, because we are the executive branch, it is a town-wide policy for streets if we adopt it. And I understand your point. We have other policies, and sometimes we don't know they exist, and other yeah. people don't. So to me, that's more of an implementation piece, and it probably doesn't belong here. For example, if a planning board or a ZBA were re reviewing something that had streets in it, public or private ways, they, you know, think they would get commentary from the town engineer, the DPW, it's really their job in reviewing streets and sidewalks and, you know, the whole thing that this applies to, to say, hey, by the way, uh, you know, 2018, here's the complete street policy. So there are different w mechanisms to let, whether it's a permit granting board or other boards, know the people who are working on streets and sidewalks all the time. So. Yeah, we don't always educate all of the other boards and committees about all the stuff we do, but I would think in this case, sort of the keeper of this policy is going to be the TAC and the Department of Public Works. We're going to be aware of this and own it and share that as they're giving technical assistance to, re to other boards and committees. Does that help at all? It helps. 
the town engineer sees just about every development that comes through town. There's only a few that they don't see. And the few they don't see are more special. They're, they're a little different. Either they're a approval not required type subdivision plan in which there is an impact to the roadway, but it's because of the approval not required, we don't get to say as much. And there's um, one other one that we don't really weigh in that much on, don't actually see, but they're very, except for approval not required, the other ones are very minor. We do see almost everything else. So you would be the keeper of this policy in a sense? In a sense, it does come to us and the planning board, and we input to the planning board, so. Okay. All right. No. Further comment or question? Are we ready for a motion? Well, or to make amendments, or to suggest well, something the, else. The one place I, you know, shall advocate for compliance. I might say may advocate for compliance, but that maybe that's. I know it's not what the committee wants, but um, have the opportunity to advocate for compliance. But there's something like um, insisting that another group advocate. It's a little hung up, but I. I'll go with a majority on this. So other people are okay. I guess I'm seeing that particular concept as whoever's <clears throat> feeling like they're responsible for this, this some well, given project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if it's ZBA who's working on something, then it makes sense that they might want to advocate. If it's TAC working more directly with somebody who's been talking to them, then they mm -hmm. shall advocate. But saying that they may makes it seem optional. Mm -hmm. And I don't yes, think I we do want to make it seem okay. optional. All right, I said I'd go with the majority. So okay. it's a little loose. <laughs> Someone like to make a motion? I move to approve the complete streets policy dated April 9, 2018, as recommended by the Transportation Advisory Committee. Second. There's a second. Is there further discussion? Ms. Brewer? Somehow at the end of this, again, as was pointed out, we don't exactly have a template for our policies but somehow that it's clear that obviously we're not approving it on a day in April <laughs> and it's not effective on a day in April. But um, so I know it's a little confusing because the motion says it's an April draft, but the reality is we did not amend it and we just are saying this is the new policy effective May 14th, right? It'll just say revised right. May 14th or voted May 14th well, or I something think like that. The last, the last line approved this, it'll be this, uh, 14th day of, April, of May 2018. So should you say as amended? I mean, that's the only amendment was the date. That's the only thing I was confused about that and the fact that we don't want the footer to say April 9th either. Once, because once once this is over, oh, yeah. the, the list of documents we used at this meeting includes the April 9th version. The next meeting that we have someday we'll that's May, the we'll follow-up, May it'll meeting. say May 14th on the bottom of it. So, so just something that clarifies that, just so well, that it doesn't keep getting dated April because we didn't do it in April. But the draft is, uh, I mean, it's sort of like, the problem is wanting to identify the draft that we're taking care of and I'm the approval the is a blank line, so. I'm fine with the motion. She just wants this to come out a certain way. I just want it, when it's printed, to not have the date in the footer that's April and to show, like you said, at the end, where it's yelled nice and yellow, where it says approve this date of. Well, just to suggest, okay. let's say, adopted by right at the top. In fact, that would be even better, because then you don't have to go to the end, right? On the front? Who wants yeah, to read right all under, that? Yeah. Just right under the title. <coughs> those, nice are, those are helpful suggestions, not part of the motion. Exactly. Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Uh, uh, and thank you. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Suffering. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So next on our agenda is the summer meeting schedule. So there are two, <laughs> There's two. different, slightly different versions. B-I and B-I-I. -I. Yeah. And then I didn't see a material difference in the two calendars that ended up in my pocket. I have one tape, one was stapled to the back of the complete streets policy, so I think it was oh, in, I inadvertently got attached to that. Oh. But it, I do have two one. And I think the distinction Where's between the two sets of dates, which are the, the you know, the uh, list of, of dates, the, the difference gets to be in October. Um, 
there's October 1st, 15th, and 29th, or October 15th, 22nd, and 29th. Um, and I think that's the only difference in the two, is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, and it really had to do with, with um, the first. Some, some holidays around the 1st of October. Um, are there any other questions or comments or suggestions around those dates? Um, we kind of used last summer's template to, to frame that a little bit. Um, yes, Ms. Well, Green. I'm just perplexed, and maybe we can resolve this once and for all, but the Jewish holidays w that we don't meet on are the High Holy Days, which are Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah, and then these other ones pop up, and it's not, we keep acting like we can't meet on those dates, and I, I don't have any information that says we shouldn't or can't. So I think that it was known as it was a holiday, but didn't know how significant content of this us meeting. Yes, ma'am. So had I worked on this, which I did not, but if I had, I would have looked at the listing online that says which days work are allowed, and there's a reference, for example, into that at the end of the September colorful coded calendar. So to me, if it's if it's a holiday that's that's beyond what Ms. Kruger mentioned, but that no work is allowed on certain days of it, that that is a good one not to have in there because it doesn't prospectively you know, disenfranchise our employees who may be celebrating, et cetera, that might need to come before us for a meeting. But it does get wicked complicated, obviously, depending on how many holidays and where the lunar calendar falls any given year. But that's usually what I look to is those basic, most clearly high holy days, plus any that say no work allowed, which sometimes is at the beginning and the end of a particular issue. So, Mr. Walt, since this policy has never actually been written, do we have it handy on which are the days work is not allowed so that we can straighten out the October situation? I've passed that along to the council since we waited for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, so which ones are we talking about? September, October? October the, uh, basically, October 1st, 1st through, yeah. Basically. The first is really the question mark. I mean, it's a, it's a judgment call. I would think that actually more people would be involved in, say, evening activities on the second of Tuesday than the Monday. Mm -hmm. The Monday is not observed by a lot of people. And, I mean, again, it depends. You know, you're looking at a list of very orthodox that says what you can do and can't do. Right. But of course, you know, that it's like constitutional rights. You don't want to disenfranchise people based on numbers. You know, but I think if it were, if I were to make a my best guess is I would say Tuesday evening is more of a problem than Monday during the day. Um, because there are ceremonies that people might attend on Tuesday the 2nd. I mean, wait, I'm sorry, if that's the, wait, hold it. It's, it's Monday night the first that's night, the though. Did they, do the, did they do the calendar right? Yes. The question. Otherwise, we can, if you want, otherwise we can set, I don't know if we'll set those dates aside and come back to them another next time. Since they're not urgent. Mm -hmm. Well, we're trying to decide if we should meet the first, the fifteenth, and the twenty ninth. I know, or but the 15th, it's, it's, the like, it's, like, it's May, and not October. So if we were to wait, <laughs> so. yeah, we do have some time to research. Oh come we, on, people! Jeez. Okay, so no, okay, so I think the Monday. Uh, we appreciate that staff tried to tell us what the coding was for this, but yeah. I think we just still are not quite I think getting the, clear the, on what it is. We do have a lot more info. I think the October is in that case correct. It begins on the evening of the first. Right. So, so it doesn't that's, seem that's like correct to, we to, should do it. It's correct to avoid Monday in that case. Yes. It depends if they put the calendar in right, yeah. 24th and 25th are iffy or something might have family activities in the evening. You're looking at September? Mm-hmm. Physical. Because we're only scheduled for the 15th and 17th, right? So we're okay. Right, so that's on that fine, right? fine, yeah. So October 1st, I think I would avoid, since they got the, the way they marked in the calendar. So that puts us to the II version, the 15th, 22nd, and 29th. Yeah. So the the only other thing I would suggest folks do is pencil in or enter between the 15th and the 22nd, October 18th, because we'll do our uh, 
budget forecast for the coming year as far as um, expectations of state revenues mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. So. Uh, likely that Thursday, which is when we typically do right. it in mid-October. That's, that's, that's the four board know. that's marked in the right. little tiny yeah. red. Call. It says four board, but... But, it's, but that's not at night. What time is do we do that? It's right? usually... I want to say we do usually do that at about 5 p.m. Oh, right. That's what I thought. It's a little later than right. the budget. The budget we usually do at 4 p.m. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Put it in. So, so we could, so at this point we're looking at the 15th, the 18th as four board, the 22nd and the 29th for right. October meetings. That's but, correct. Which means there is kind of a gap in September, but it is what it is. In, in, in terms of from the 17th to October 15th, which right. obviously you guys struggle with. So. Right. Unless we <coughs> added, that's what it is. Unless we added a meeting on a not Monday. Which we have right. done. Often, you know, yeah. like like we could do the 12th. Yeah. If things get, if things, I would, I would suggest that, again, well, playing off of the idea that we have time is maybe not at that meeting at this point because we will still have three and a partial meeting on the 18th. Like we could do liquor licenses on the 18th mm -hmm. that we didn't do on the 15th, for example. Right. But um, no, I'm, I'm back looking at September. I guess we have the 5th and the 17th. September is really hard for people because they have so many of their kids back to school things in terms of seeing what we're doing or yeah. coming to our things mm -hmm. if they're staff members. It's like, yeah. September's tough for people. You are way more tolerant than I am. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> we have a job to do. We're meeting. We are going to only meet twice in September because it's complicated because of the holiday. We could meet on the 12th if we needed to. Yes. The only thing is, if we wanted to reserve a date where we could meet and then cancel it, it's better than trying to add it okay. later when people book things. So that's add all. it now. That's right, so the planning board doesn't steal it from us. That's right, because that's Wednesday the 12th. Right. Mm -hmm. So are we that suggesting really the 12th of I'm September? I'm suggesting putting it in and maybe put... You, the 5th is already a Wednesday, and so it's kind of consistent to do it two weeks in a row, so right? If we don't need it, but I think we might, I think there's enough moving parts that it might be helpful after the primary day. And it makes sense to do it two yeah. Wednesdays in yes. a row rather than yes. like a Tuesday or a Thursday or something like that. We can always cancel if we don't have a compelling agenda. So does someone want to offer a motion that captures all of this? There's part of it on our motion sheet yeah. that will require I some. find that. Uh, to include meeting dates of because the June dates are already approved, right? That's why yep. those aren't on here. Mm -hmm. 4th, 11th, and 25th, we already approved before. So meeting dates of July 9th, July 23rd, August 13, August 20, August 27, Wednesday, September 5, Wednesday, September 12, and everyone assumes Monday the 17th, mm -hmm. um, October, not the first, mm -hmm. right. but the 15th, mm -hmm. the 22nd, yeah. and the 29th. I forgot the 18th. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to not do that right okay. now. Okay. 15th, right. 22nd, and 29th. For regular. November 13th, Tuesday, November 13th, November 26th, and December 3rd. And it doesn't need to say as presented or amended. It's just those are the meeting. That's yeah. the meeting schedule. Is there a second? Second. second. Oh, yeah. either one. Okay. There is a second. Two seconds. Is there further discussion? And then would you also like us to just add a second sentence that the October 18th four boards meeting is also just assumed to be a four boards meeting, not a regular business mm -hmm. meeting. But we could, that way we can put it on our list for our meeting schedule yeah, so people have it. And sometimes we've done business, as sometimes you said, have and sneaking a license or something. Yeah. And so that's on Thursday. Motion. I would make it a, can we make it part of the motion as a second sentence? Would the seconder agree to that? Rather than trying to mix it into the <laughs> everything else? I would. Does the other seconder sure. agree? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So it's agreed that we handed the motion yes. here. So the second sentence is something along the lines of the Thursday, October 18th, four board meeting will also be posted and added to the schedule. Okay. We have to, to vote since yeah, the majority is yeah. between the yeah. maker and the seconders. We have a majority. <laughs> so. have to say yeah, you don't have to add say it to the schedule. Add schedule. it to the schedule. Yeah. Okay. Is there further discussion? Uh, 
I, the only thing I would note is that uh, we didn't put in our individual vacations, and I will not be here on the 27th, but that's obviously not a reason to, that we shouldn't meet then. Oh, are you talking about August? Which 27th? August 27th. So okay. I think separate from this motion, we need to start filtering through our, our vacation calendars. Yeah. I don't Agreed. have mine yet. Not so if we could vote on that, and then we could mm -hmm. perhaps ask mm -hmm. Mr. Bachman to make a note about August 27th for you, Mr. Steinberg, so that when laying out agendas <coughs> and particularly the evaluation, we avoid, try and avoid, avoid doing that date. significant work that day. That's right. I mean, so not that all our work all isn't work significant. All work we're significant. Of course. <laughs> let's, stay with the let's stay with the motion. Incredibly significant. Let's stay with the motion and dispatch it. All right. Is there further discussion? <laughs> dispatch. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you, everybody, so for working that out. Year. And so we know August 27 is not a great day already. And then we'll continue to feed our other dates as we feed our okay. game. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So, next on our agenda, review and take positions on April 30th, annual town meeting articles. I believe one remains, and that is Article 27. Um, and so I'll introduce this a little bit. There's a memo in your packet uh, from, the, from uh, the chair of the uh, Amherst Municipal Affordable Housing Trust. The trust met last Thursday night uh, and voted to move this, uh, first of all, to, to send this uh, memo to us. Um, I did not vote because it was self-referential in that regard. Um, the other thing I will share about that is that the amended motion language, which is also attached, I believe, is it was was formally taken under consideration by the by the full board and, and voted uh, to support that because it clears up some concerns they had about the original language that was in that mm -hmm. that warrant article. Mm -hmm. uh, my understanding from the chair, uh, from the uh, moderator, is that that modified language that's indicated there is allowable uh, as within the scope. Um, it really sort of creates a two-stage process for conveyance of property. Technically three, if you consider the school committee's got to release it first, but but it does create a tiered approach that allows some level of control and some assurances. So uh, if if the trust gets to a place where they're looking to do an RFP, they can have a sufficient level of site control that allows. Uh, sort of the full fruition of the of the project to be um, possible, and I think the other piece that I think they stress in here is relative to the delay it would cause to not continue to move forward with this. Um, so I think it you know it's a central necessary. It, it has been something we've been you know the trust has been working on the town has been working on. I think it falls into that category, and then also if it, if we stop. This process moving forward, it potentially delays significantly affordable housing at that location if it if it proves to be possible. But I will take any other. That sort of lays up mm -hmm. some where we're at on that, and I just wanted to see if anyone had any comments or suggestion or wanted to offer a motion relative to that article. Before doing the motion, I did have some two things that I was thinking about, and they all have to do with the sixth line in the article as presented in that uh, piece that's attached to Mr. Harnick's memo. Uh, when as I was trying to remember why it was that we had to include eminent domain since it's being transferred from the school committee to the select board so that uh, we're, the, the, and the, but the other thing that is significant is even beyond that is the question is why after the words eminent domain, does it say for affordable housing purposes? Because if this transfer doesn't work out for uh, transfer to the Affordable Housing Trust, which we hope will happen through the course of events, including beyond our time in office, um, shouldn't the town own it for broader purposes than just affordable housing purposes so that future bodies including the council can take can make mm -hmm. appropriate decisions about intended uses for the land if affordable housing is not practical hmm. any comment on that I, I think the intent was to say it's expressly for affordable housing 
I think that they, my estimation is that they did not want it to be, have the select board have the opportunity to do something different with it. Except in the next sentence, it authorizes us to transfer to the Affordable Housing Trust for affordable housing purposes. So we've got for affordable housing purposes in the mm -hmm. twice in mm -hmm. yeah. fairly rapid succession. And the prior one is the one that I'm mm -hmm. questioning about. Well, I also wonder okay. if whether it, the Monterey would rule it in scope to take that one out. But I don't know the answer I, to that. In a way, it's redundant. I mean, I've read this a couple times, and I didn't notice that. But it does mean if it's sitting with the select board and it doesn't go forward, you know, for site reasons, whatever, as an affordable project with the trust, then we've just limited what we can, what we or the council can do with it in the future, if I'm understanding Mr. Steinberg correctly. Well, the other reading might be, does it revert back to the school committee at that point? Well, it doesn't say that. Well, if it can't be for affordable housing purposes. It does. <laughs> First, yeah. they give it to us, and then it's with us forever until we give it to the trust. So. That is kind of the eminent domain doesn't bother me because it does say to clear title, and even though it was with the schools, with the town, and then to the town, who knows what the old deed had, and if you start tracing it, so we always have that in there to cover right. us because of title complexities. But I can see that that first affordable housing um, kind of sticks you. Yeah. So the question is. Um, is it possible to amend the motion? It's our, it's our motion. Our motion to word to remove the first words for affordable housing purposes and those <laughs> five words, and then it reads said property by eminent domain for the purpose of clearing mm -hmm. title. In the town's title there too, and to authorize the select board to convey, and then we get to the affordable housing in the second in that next piece. So you know what this means. You have to ask the moderator. So you thought of it. Yeah. Well, I, I think what we may do procedurally, as far as the motion, and we yeah. may. I don't know that this will come up this evening, but mm -hmm. so we have some time. So we may mm -hmm. need to take it in. Pause, not take action on it tonight, and, and ask those questions to the moderator. And council. And then come back. Mm -hmm. Is that yep. sort of where I think people are at on this, or not? Or I'm. I, that's what I would. Largely, I mean, so practically think, right? speaking, in terms of scope, obviously we need to know what the moderator thinks. But to take out for affordable housing purposes, it doesn't necessarily seem like it's somehow broadening the scope, although maybe it would be interpreted that way, mm -hmm. since we're saying the real purpose is for clearing the town's title, when that's right. always been the real purpose of that sentence. Right. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, we, we that was extraneous when it was written in right. there. It isn't mm -hmm. more of a scrivener's issue, I would, is how I would promote it, rather than as it needed to say for affordable housing purposes in there that we were trying to clear. We were trying to do a whole lot of things at once right. is where this got really confusing. That may or may not be considered in scope, and it doesn't change my vote. What I'm practically, cons I think it makes it cleaner, and I think it makes it smarter, but I don't think it makes the article fatally bad if it's not fixed. And so if the moderator says, no, I won't accept that, then fine. We'll go with what we and have. And the other, although I'm happy to hear why that wouldn't work, but in, as opposed to a preference. The other thing I'm concerned about, is given all the frustration town meeting has exhibited this time around and in past years, about changes being made, mm -hmm. I really <coughs> find it unfortunate to say, mid-sentence, we're going to replace some text with another sentence. I think it's a much better idea to try and get it right in terms of lined out stuff associated with what was in the warrant because doing it mid-sentence is just people trying to figure out what did you change. Okay, so you're on the script now. Yeah, so I'm looking at the script and, and I'm also looking at the actually not particularly informative red line version that we have here in front of us because it's not quite right in terms of what we're changing. And so if we need to just, I, I mean, the script itself just needs to be amended. What needs to go up on the board? 
right. is what I'm saying. What goes up on the screen is just going to confuse people because everybody wants to know what words did you change. Right. And so rather than reading three quarters of it and then the last quarter being something else, please let's figure out a way to line it in red appropriately, which it isn't quite <laughs> on right. the version we have. Right. It's close, but it's not right. quite right. So that's and guidance so, for Mr. Slaughter because he has to present. And it's for as well as for staff when mm -hmm. they put it up on the board when he makes the motion. Because if what they what they have right now yes, is what they need to tell them what he wants. So aside from that technical aspect of it, are we are people concerned that if we can't fix the for affordable housing purposes and that that somehow changes our position? I would have serious questions because of the reason that I stated previously. I fully believe that the Affordable Housing Trust is going to do everything possible to make this work as an affordable housing project. Therefore, if it turns out not to work for mm -hmm. them, then the town is owning the land and um, uh, to have had that limitation in the acquiring document could be problematic. So I don't think it's a light subject and I regret that I didn't think of it earlier, but I didn't. Right. So I think we, why don't we, my suggestion would be we hold off on action on this Final action, yeah. because That's we need to ask the moderator a little bit. I think you're right, you, might, you could almost consider it a Scrivener's type error, but certainly mm -hmm. Uh, the intention in that sentence is about clearing title. Right. right. And I'm, I'm sorry I missed it too because right. I think it is potentially a fatal flaw. Right. Okay. So, so we'll, 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 we'll ask the moderator to tidy that up. Um, are there any other town meeting related items? No. Do any of you have any other related town meeting items? If not, then I think we have one item under seven, which is a wine and malt license. Also, uh, would someone like to make that motion? application of Wheelhouse Farm LLC for a special license to serve wine and malt beverages at a wedding on the premises of the Amherst Women's Club, May 26, 2018, from 5 to 10 p.m. Check major owner. Second. And there's a second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. And I believe we'll Oh, unless there's something else that anyone Just has. a quick announcement. So yes, please. That we, had, we had in our packet the Economic Development Forum Part 2. This one's going to be early in the day because that gets a different audience and also has a different topic. So 8.30 to 10.30 a.m. Thursday, May 31st in the town room. The, ne the next stage of the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. This is going to be talking about SWOT analysis, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And they have taken our advice from the last one. So the data should be interesting for that. Um, the other things are when, this Wednesday, we have the very first medical marijuana provider is running an open house on Wednesday that the entire community is invited to. There's a ribbon cutting at 1 p.m. at 169 Meadow Street, but the event runs from 12 to 3, so people can get tours because it's not open yet. It's to open the following week. And the other marijuana-related issue, since it's such a hot topic, is on Thursday the 17th of this week, there will be our third community outreach meeting. Then, and I say our meaning being held in Amherst, not having anything to do with the town setting it up. The applicant has to set these up and have them within six months of their application. And so there is a gentleman named Jack Carney who has put out a public notice associated with that, and it's at the hangar um, on University, at 10 University Drive at 6 p.m. And I would say don't be late because the last one I went to took 30 minutes and they were done. So um, it's not necessarily a long meeting as opposed to the Economic Development Forum, which may well go a full two hours. What time was that? 
Seven. The community meeting is at six. That was on the day on of that Thursday, the seventeenth. Seventeenth. Okay. The day after the other company's open house. Are there any other announcements? Did you today's event in Boston? Yeah. I don't have yeah. details on that. Okay. We'll no, talk about it on Wednesday. <laughs> so, if not, then we shall uh, go into recess, and we will adjourn at the end of the town meeting session. Uh, as is appropriate. So thank you all.